The Cleveland Way is a national trail in the historic area of Cleveland in North Yorkshire. It runs 110 miles between Helmsley and the Brig at Filey, skirting the North York Moors National Park. Look, there she is, look. <laughs> the big blue, or the big brown, <coughs> up these parts. So welcome to the second half and the coastal half of the Cleveland Way and the bit that I was looking forward to because my stomping ground it's sort of an achievement unlocked and now we go on to the next level which is the coastal part which means I won't need a map I just know the route it's pretty straightforward and there's some wonderful little towns and villages to see along the way so stay tuned there you go there's me look medic Rosebury topping off there in the distance. Give some idea how far I've come. These cracks don't fill me full of confidence though because there is a lot of erosion and it looks like I'm walking at this side of that because if that goes... <laughs> and I don't need my weight on it, especially after Yorkshire breakfast. This is all too much, this. Look at this. Someone's jumped off, haven't they, I think. This is so beautiful, I can't quite cope with it. Because of it, it's clear to me that, you know, I was just speculating, but I think someone might have taken their life here or fallen off the edge. There's lots of like this stuff here, like confetti. And then someone, I think this guy Paul, has put these slates here, words of encouragement, which should be heeded by, you know, by everyone. I mean, it's just powerful, isn't it? Because you might come here with the darkest thoughts. You might get here and read these beautiful signs and then just think twice. Just give it that little bit more time. Oh my God. Ah. Sometimes it's just beautiful and, and tragic at the same time, isn't it? That's life. Like, as humans, just we're capable of such beautiful things. Oh, sorry, but... It's getting me in filter tips. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, shout out whoever did that, mate. That's. I bet there's a story, like a deeper story to it as well. That's even more. Makes it even more poignant. <laughs> Dang! Fuck. I mean, this is it. Life is fragile. Life is turbulent. And life is beautiful. Life is chaotic. Just a big chaos soup in it of emotions and feelings. And I'm just here in the middle of it all. Just a shape. Just this shape. I don't know what I'm doing. But I feel it and I love it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Emo hikes. Right, anyway, so, the weather looks perfect today anyway for hiking. Lovely weather, not too warm. Oh, well, there's been a fire right on the end of this cliff. And although that's bad, I bet that looks sick from out at sea. There's some more, look. Seeing all them um, signs has really just got me thinking because obviously when, you, when you're hiking you just have a lot of time to think, don't you? And um, 
it's it not only breaks my heart but it it fills me with like a love for other humans that because that guy's done that as a beautiful thing in it just to try and give people a second chance stopping from doing something they might regret or whatever and then at the same time as humans we can be so broken and so disconnected that that is a better option and it's and it's sad it saddens me it doesn't always have to be grit and determination and uh, let's have you there's a there's a huge strength in knowing when you're weak and being able to just sit with that feeling and um, and just accept it and accept that it will pass so if you're struggling with anything like that mate as a human a human oxygen breather to to another human oxygen breather on this dirty circle I send you love I send you nout but love and I'm gonna leave a link uh, leave a number below or I'll put a number here to the Samaritans that you can call if you need to yeah don't suffer in silence is what I'm basically saying and that's that we'll leave that there that was just a little uh, I had to get it out because it felt like the right thing to say and it was emotional I got a bit in my feelings because of that but <sighs> anyway visibility looks shit as per you having that <laughs> Decent clobber. Medic! Right, let's desand these shoes. Now then, morning. It's a lovely day for it, whatever it is. <laughs> hey? Yeah. Are you heading far? Finally. Well, Robin has bear today. Then finally tomorrow. Anything beats that heat wave. I was on top of Moors for heat wave. Yeah. Nearly killed me. There was no shelter. Uh, yeah. I was like a pork scratching, just struggling. Just 39. Well, I live just up road there. Right. Do you have paddling pool out or out? Yeah. <laughs> you... Right, I didn't. I were you still doing a bit? Good lad. Yeah. Are you going downstairs now? Are you? Aye. Yeah, I'll go and grab uh, something to drink at Staves. Yeah. yeah. Where do you go? Up at top, Captain Cook. I'll go, no, I'll go at bottom and then work my way back up. What's it, what's that one at bottom? Lobster, um, What? Crab pot, lobster pot, something like that pub. Lobster. That's it. But there's one on the left hand side, there's Captain Cook at top. Yeah. White one. You go down bank. And you go down right into the bottom. There's a little pub there called George. Yeah. Painted red. Oh, yeah. Then further on you get to the cod. Sound job. Have a good day. Okay. See you later, mate. I'm gonna have a let you look have a little look around here because it's not what you'd imagine from there's it's like the next few villages are really like quaint cobbles, maybe white houses, it's all very, very cute. And then you get to skinning grove and it's like this, like it's like these red brick houses and these little, I don't know, these these terraces all just near the sea. And it's like a council estate, but next to the sea. I'm all for it. Let's have a look. Oh, these little hills kill me. I'll let, let's, uh, we'll take a detour and we'll go and uh, have a little look around Skinning Grove. Pause it and read it if you're that way inclined. I'll show you, but I can't be bothered, mate. I'm <laughs> supposed to be doing 26 miles today. I'm not going to show you. I was going to do you a little tour around, but I ain't got time. Got to do <laughs> so many miles. My feet can't be traipsing up and down these streets just to bring it to you. And there it is. That's all. That's how big it is. That's Skinning Grove. The story I heard about Skinning Grove is that well, they used to have, I don't know if you say it, if it's the case now, I doubt it, but the sewage pipe used to just run 
not very far offshore at all into the sea and um, there was a few lads in alehouse and one of them had had too many and he'd gone to the toilet and threw up and his false teeth had come out when he's thrown up in the toilet and he's flushed it uh, and then apparently one of his mates like a day or two later had found his teeth on the beach and took him to the pub and the bloke just chucked him back in and carried on swilling <laughs> now if it's true you've got to give him a salute if not salute whoever made it up look at this lovely house on its own overlooking that There, if you're interested, a shout out, Pat. What we got, Pat? Nice. The gravity. There's your view for you, look. Look at that. The cliff is coming away from the side, not for the faint hearted. There's a poem etched in that wall, look. Pauline, in spring I saw you. Your eyes shone like dew. In summer we shared a love we had so true. In autumn they told us there was nothing we could do. And it was winter when you left. Ted. Oh, dear me. RIP Pauline. First section of this coastal hike, I'm not, is an emotional roller coaster. It's a roller coaster up and down these, uh, these valleys but it's also been an emotional roller coaster just seeing things like that and little tributes everywhere and it's funny isn't it it's like oh look at that coming away from cliff that gives me oh, weird feelings it's funny isn't it like a lot of people will want to come to the sea to reflect and to have their final sort of thoughts and stuff and uh my granddad, my granddad Les, wanted to be taken from the hospice to Robin Hood's Bay. And he said he wants to see God's own country one last time. And we'll be passing Robin Hood's Bay, so I'll let you have a look at what he, what he classed as God's own. He was right, like, he was right. But yeah, there is something very, very dramatic about the sea there's a pull towards it there is for me having been brought up near the sea and I guess like symbolically it's just the end in it it's the end it's the end of the land and what's out there we don't know so there's your tributes and and good luck and God bless I'm getting I'm waffling I not too much about like life and death but I've got to go with how I feel and this is bringing, this is doing it to me with all these tributes and stuff. What's this? What is this? What are you? You're too worn out because it's sea. It's something to do with the alum quarries which are these all along this coast. Medic! No mate, you alright? Do you mind me filming you? 50th anniversary bench. Under your feet at over 621 miles of mine tunnels with roadways large enough for trucks, machinery and hundreds of miners that have worked there. Wow! That's underneath me, so that's the mine. So underneath here there's all lads like this, look. He doesn't look happy to be fair. He does not look chuffed to be grafting out mine. He wants to be out landscaping in the sun. Should we sit with him? There's a little, little change jar. <laughs> if you wanted to know about the mines, it's all there for you. Right, I'm going to sit and read through all this for you, but I am going to sit and have a little read of it myself. Miles down underneath me, roads with like trucks and lights. There's probably a, there's definitely a costa down there. Maybe even an alehouse. A little, I want to go down there. Me oh, that's sea kale. Proper greenery. Loads of it, though. Is 
see these cobbles from the top all the way to the bottom I laid them many moons ago in a team of a lot of people and we laid them and we had to melt the, uh, the bitumen to go in between the cobbles because they laid new pipes in the middle of the road and we had to come back and lay all these cobbles all the way down here bit of cake, coffee people getting on it on pints already look Making good time. People are on it, look, just over there. Staring at me like I've lost me noggin, but it's too late. They're right, a lot of it. They partly have. Um, <laughs> this is good. This is good, I feel good, mate, look. Just a latte. And we've got a chocolate brownie. It was nothing like this when I was younger. It's really, like, taken off now full of holiday cottages and cafes and all that but back in the day it wasn't like that it's nice to see it booming with tourism especially after sea vid it's beautiful and I laid the cobbles that's always a little I'll always tell you if I ever take you to staves that I laid the cobbles in staves au revoir Oof. got the sea to the left and the rolling fields to the right. Hay bales on them. Hay outdoors. For anyone who knows me, they'll know. I love a good hay bale. Love a good hay bale. Don't know why. It's just aesthetically pleasing to me to see them. Bit of a shin splitter. Port Mulgrave. Originally named Rosedale but to avoid confusion with the ironstone mines of Rosedale in the middle of the North Yorkshire Moors, the area was renamed Port Mulgrave in honour of the local landowner, the Earl of Mulgrave. The harbour was constructed in 1856, initially exporting ironstone to Jarrow on Tyneside to supply Palmer's Shipbuilding and Iron Company. When the mine began to run out, Sir Charles Palmer established Grinkle Ironstone Mine three miles to the east and in 1875 a narrow gauge railway line was built to service the mine. The ironstone wagons from Grinkle were taken over bridges then through a tunnel and along another inclined tunnel on a ropeway powered by a steam engine. The wagons emerged 30 foot above sea level in the cliffside. They were then led onto a gantry on the east harbour wall ready for loading the ironstone directly onto the ships. Port Mulgrave was a busy port for 40 years but due to a new railway link and cheaper foreign sources of ironstone, the harbour ceased to be used by 1920 and was abandoned. In 1934, Grinkle Mine was also abandoned and the harbour machinery sold off as scrap and the gantry accidentally destroyed by fire. The West Harbour Breakwater Wall was deliberately destroyed by the Royal Engineers to prevent its use as part of any German invasion during World War II. bit of gate action for you there. Oh, it's a struggle. It's just, is it? You know where? Struggle one handed that like. But I've got it in tank because I'm the CEO of latch and locks. Good neck on that. Would not get it in a rear naked chair. I could probably do a leg lock or something or just a clean. I just do splits and then uppercut it like Van Damme into into sack. Well done mate. <laughs> He's on roids for sure. How old did you say you were? I'll, I'm 79 in August. 79 and still smashing it up and down these cliffs <laughs> like there's no tomorrow, even during the heat wave. Yeah. What Honestly, was your name? Dave. Dave. Cheers. Paul. Che oh, nice to meet you, Paul. You and too, where are you mate. from? I'm from York, originally from Whitby. I'm from Manchester. Here we but go. I come up here every month between May and September. So I'm back again in August. Then September. Have I've, you got, I've already been uh, March, uh, May and June. And what keeps you going? What keeps you hiking these long distances at this age? It's, it's impressive. Because uh, I want to do it. You like, are, you, you, you're either 
like that type of thing. Yeah. I, get, I get bored doing nothing. That's like I am, yeah. That's it, yeah. And I, guess I mean, I used to work for chartered accountants. Since I retired, I look after about six or seven of my neighbours' gardens. I don't take anything. Right. Just, just keep to keep active. me. And when the first thing I get up in the morning, I um, do about half an hour's exercises, straight after I've had a shave and a wash, before I have my breakfast. Because when it, uh, depending on what I do go. during the day, I don't feel like it later on. There you go. That's top advice. Get up, do some exercises. Don't stop, because if you... If you don't use it, you'll lose it. This man is a superman. <laughs> there you go. After what he's done man, today man, on, you, on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, look after yourself. You mate. too, mate. Yeah, Take care. <laughs> Buzzing off that, man. Buzzing. What a legend. What a legend he is. 79, mate. He's 79 and still smashing it. Still getting out and doing a bit. He looks well for it as well, mate. Gone. He's gone. Just a, cl just a cloud of smoke. Does he even exist? Was he just me from the future? We'll never know. Nice. A nice view to sit and enjoy. Shout out Malcolm. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. Look at that man, that doesn't look very that's how wacky colour is that. If it was Tuesday I'd have been in there, no doubt. Club Tropicana, hey, there's more little duckies coming out at undergrowth look, are ya? You alright? Wait, wait. You're having a good one. You've got a nice little setup here, haven't you? Tucked away. Anyway, it's been nice catching up with you. I'll see, hey, there's more coming out. You come out then. Look at this, mate. It's like I'm giving a speech. We are gathered here to Drake to pay homage to the duck god, me. There's another one, though. <laughs> Where are you all coming from, though, TBH? Quick, guys, how many of you? One. Two, three, four, five. Any more? Any more in back? Cause this is it now. The duck. Oh, you know, fighting. Look how green it is in there. Two more. Come on, you late. Quick. So before someone comes past and thinks I've absolutely lost plot, what's he doing? Giving a concert to a bunch of ducks. What are you doing? I've gathered you all here today to say that uh, life is very short, guys. Especially for you, I think. There's another two there. Look. Life is very short, so please do appreciate it. Make the most of it. You know, tell each other you love each other. Have a little hug now. I've given you the tools you need to have a good life. Now use it with each other. And the key to it is just love and understanding. All right, guys? No, fa right, that was, right, forget it. See you later. I can't teach them anything. There's Whitby. W H I T B Y Whitby Whitby. <laughs> Detour. Some decent waves. Anyone in? Yeah. There's a few in. I'm getting real like sentimental and nostalgic. Maybe because of how the day's gone. But. Mind you, look how beautiful it is. W-H-I-T-B-Y. Clean surf, look at that. Is it, does it get any better? No, it doesn't. Stunning. I won't be able to do much. There we are, look. There's Matty's bench. Matty's bench that we helped get some money for, to put towards it. For Luke and Angie. And his mum and dad. Shout out Matty Randall, rest in peace. Went to school with him, grew up with him around this when we used to live around this area. Again, another sentimental wallop to the old noggin. Eee. Definitely putting hiking poles away and that before I get into Whitby. <laughs> I don't want to get my head stoved in. 
You know what I mean? Got a reputation to uphold, mate. Can't be waltzing through dressed as lollipop, lad. We ah, with support sticks. It's not how I want to be remembered. <laughs> Look at this for a pad. Though. This is a new pad. Wow! Imagine having that. Look at this. The poet's view. Can I have it? I'll give you a couple of northern monks for it. All open plan and that look. Probably just someone's second home. <laughs> there it is. It's worn off a little bit. My good mate Gareth, Gaz Marsh, Gwyneth, his mum. Rest in peace, Gwyneth. Man, this is like. I know quite a lot of these benches. I know these lads as well, these two young lads who passed, Ben and Jamie. Rest in peace you lads. We're not here for a very long time are we? And you never know when you're going to just get logged off. Which makes it even more, even more beautiful. Look at all the benches, all the memory benches. That's what I was saying earlier about people wanting to just come to the edge of this, the edge of here and look out to sea for your final thing so it's important to appreciate it while you're still here so we've done 19 miles today 19 miles and it's about another seven about another seven or eight to Robiners Bay and so that'll be a that's a shift in it I'm not gonna do too much of this style of filming in Whitby because <laughs> It's just everyone I went to school with would be like, hey, are you muppet, what are you doing? I'm a content creator, guys, deal with it. <laughs> Get him! Launch me into Arbor. And rightly so. What's with all poignant stuff, mate? I used to drink in here. I used to get drunk in this, in this very shelter. We took shelter and we used to drink cider in here and keep out the rain. And now it's giving me motivational quotes that have been a theme of the day. Freshening up in kids' paddling pool. <laughs> whatevs, mate, whatevs. Look at these steps, mate. It's just skate here. <sighs> Look at that, would I dare do it now? Would I now? The fearlessness of youth. Oh, I've joined a hiking group. This is my new squad. Just chilling, we're gonna go and have a look at this, which is the Captain Cook. That's Captain Cook's statue. We've seen his monument, haven't we? A few days ago. Let's take you through here, because it's an iconic, an iconic Whitby view. The whale bones. I'll take you through here because it's a nice little view. Shame there's a gadget at the end of it, look. Eee. Oh, he knows all the little back streets like. Don't you worry about that. Every little snicket and alleyway there is going. So we're going to go along here over at Swing Bridge, down round up. 199 steps to the Abbey and on. I'll take it back ways. There we go. Out onto it. Onto the front. Dipped into the town and I've walked back up here because it's a nicer view. A highlight moment. Watch a gully just swoop down and take it away from me. That's how quickly it could all go. Trips out to sea, a whip his old lifeboat. <laughs> Any more sailors? We are boarding now for this next 20 minute sea trip. Different. <sighs> Goodbye to my Whitby. Lots of them look. The Roe Hiller, I think. Shipwreck.
Foghorn, look. I'll go show you. That's Foghorn. This one living in Foghorn? Yeah. Do you come back to mine, lads? Why? Living in a Foghorn. Foghorn Towers. And then, you'd think you'd get a bit lonely in Foghorn Towers. But then your neighbours are, look. Lighthouse. You've got the Lighthouse family just over... <sighs> Just over where they you see. There's your lighthouse, look ya. Yeah. I hope I've got I think I've only got one more battery for this thing. I didn't bring a charger for it because I just didn't think I thought it'd be fine, but I just ploughed through them. Um so I've only got one left, so I might have to just be a bit more selective when I'm filming and stop filming dead animals and gates and stuff and just, <laughs> just focus on important stuff well that is important to me but well, focus about stuff about the hike focus on hiking stuff not dead animals and gates Maddie! come on you should be able to do this the ceo of latch and locks there you are there we go look <laughs> Going there, still going. At the end of day four. Further than I thought. <laughs> Anybody got any cold refreshments? Because I'm parched, and the water in my bag is pr pretty much boiling hot. <laughs> and I'm not battering that, but it's important I tell you that the water now in my bag. If you put a tea bag in it, and just I carried on walking. It would just brew a cup of tea. Hey up lads, this is a nice little field you've got yourselves. A nice little vista. Spitting feathers for a pint. Gonna have one. Gonna have one lads. I'm gonna have a pint. Yep. Are you coming? Like a black sheep? <sighs> Going delirious, wasting battery power on talking to sheep. Oh, I tell you what, it's lovely and cool down here. <sighs> That's nice on the skin. Oh, should we stay down here? We've got fresh water, we've got nettles. It's a good leg workout though, leg day. Look at this, keeps going. Oh, I'll put you away because leg day is kicking me in. Three miles to go. Oh God, no. These valleys are savage now. The Cleveland Way, showing again why she's a spicy little number and she doesn't half pack a wallop. <laughs> Here's one of them wallops. Hey Siri, I need motivation. I've heard that energy and persistence conquer all things. Energy and persistence conquer all things. Hey Siri, tell me something good. You're like a human lift. You really lift people up. I'm a human lift. I lift people up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We're running. Well done, Cyril. Put him back in pocket. Got to the stage where I'm talking to Siri now. This three miles is long, man. It's like, it feels like 13 miles. Um, I, there's no way I can't go on past Robiners Bay. My feet and calves feel like they're gonna pop. But I'm a lift anyway, so cheers Siri, you've lifted me and I shall lift myself. <laughs> Med No I don't even want any food. I just want a pint. Oh, it looks like it might rain. Best get tucked in alehouse. Just for survival. I didn't want to go for a pint, but it's survival. Any port in a storm and all that. Just so happened to be alehouse, and so can't do me for it. Oh, 
We've got bolt maker. Decent airhouse, look at view. Timothy Taylor's look, bolt maker. For my money, better than landlord. Absent friends. Legit, legit one of the best pints I've ever had. I just get sloshed and sleep under this. Sleep under the table. Okay, right. Map time. Here we go. Onto the coast. Up onto the tops. This is where we saw all them wonderful um, slate messages. Along here is where we saw that little poem on the cliff. And there we have the skinning grove, so we went down, it's very undulating, down, up the other side. Some lovely views out here, the weather was just perfect, absolutely spot on for hiking. Bowlby, this is where we had a look at the mines, so underneath all of here is, and out to sea as well, is where, where all the mines are for the potash. Kept going into staves for a well-earned um, brew and a brownie. And, to repeat the fact that I laid the cobbles. <laughs> Not the original cobbles, but when they did the roadworks. Thank you very much. Up out of here, big climb out of here, but some wonderful views. Great memories. Through Port Mulgrave, which is a wonderful little place. Kept going. Past Hinderwell. Down to Runswick. This is where you hit the beach here. Walk along the beach, and then cut back in and up. Along past Kettle Ness. Again, just wonderful views along here. Da -da -da -da. Then we get the first views of Whitby down into Sands End. And then up up Sands End Road. I took the road, there wasn't much to show, it's just a road walk, so I just got that out of the way. Then dropped into Whitby. Loved this bit, loved it. Very poignant. Had my fish and chips on this little bit up here. Through the town, not having a pint. Well done, me. Pat on the back up the 199 steps and turn around, bye bye Whitby, on we go. Legs were starting to feel like popping at this point. All along here you've got your lighthouses and your foghorns. Again undulating up and down quite a lot. Man, really did put a shift in. All round here, I was, by the time I got here man, I was just done in, just. Ed had started to pop a little bit, we just wanted a gauge and there I got it. Robin Hood's Bay. Got myself tucked into an alehouse on here with these wonderful vistas over the bay. I had a couple of pints in the pub and uh, I got a little bit of a chat on. I hobbled to the bar and the barmaid was like, we had a little bit of a joke and then she ended up putting a bell on my table as a joke and then every time I pressed the bell she would come and bring me another pint. So that as a joke, I was like, oh, I can't not get another pint because there's a bell involved. This is just audio only, but I'm in a churchyard, so I have to keep it down and I'll keep here and then I'll bounce early doors with the day that I've had. Sorry if this is just audio, this is probably a terrible part of the video. Could I cut some like, visuals over the top of it? Probably not. This is just as real as it gets. <sighs> the way that the day has gone, the fact that I'm sleeping in a graveyard at the end of it is just so beautifully poignant. Just a second so you can see. Just so you can see, look. Oh, that's my setup. Shh. No tent. We're stealth in it. Hold on. Let's go. This is basically my setup. With utmost respect for the graveyard itself, I'm not on any graves or near it, you know. I'm tucked away out of the way. And you might think, oh, that's that's real scary because, you know, you're in a graveyard, but there's no safer place for me because lunatics are hanging out in graveyards. I'm, the, I'm pretty much the lunatic around here. See you on the morrow. Pitch up late, leave early, no bother.
we've left no trace up and out early doors for a we're just a little stealth camp here I mean no one <laughs> couldn't sleep with crows kicking off anyway and when you're doing this sort of camping you don't want to be sticking around so legs feel great today <laughs> feel on it I'm just going to brush my teeth brush my teeth and then we're going to crack it out man we're going to try and try and get done by tea time that's poignant isn't it Essentially, I've slept in the graveyard. So there's that. Down to my last battery on here. So, um, I'm going to be selective. We'll see what the day brings. It's, uh, it's super early. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, for an early finish today. Do you know what? It's been tough, mate. It's been tough and I can't wait to get to the finish line. Tap out on it. 11, it's felt, felt like a lot longer than that. 12 miles to Scarborough. Um, where am I going then? Ah, oh, there we go. We're off. And so there we are, that's Robin Hood's Bay. I've come through here, along here, and I've just come down to get this view just to show you. Um, but my battery's running out, so I'm just gonna turn it off because I need to save some for the end, so. Next stop, Scarborough. I'll tell you this, Scarborough has got a seagull problem. There I've said it, too many of them. <sighs> Minimum battery, both on the camera and in here. <laughs> In my body, batteries look. If you could see, there's like a red, red flash. No, it's amber. It's not red just yet, it kind of is. Little amber flashing light. Recharge your battery. That's me. Didn't do much filming coming through. Well, I haven't been doing much filming at all, to be honest, but especially coming through Scarborough, because just Google it if you want to see Scarborough. It's full of seagulls mate too many seagulls have got like a problem they're all over the side of buildings there's shit everywhere the racket they make look at that beautiful anyway <sighs> dig deep let's go nearly vlogged nearly vlogged myself off the edge <laughs> Uh, the thing is, guys, about this coastline is it's really beautiful, but you... Hey! Logged off. Vlogged off. I've not even thought about how I'm going to get from Filey Brig to Scarborough <laughs> to get my train. I've not even thought about it. I don't know if there's any buses. Or... Do I have to get a taxi or what? I'm not in the market for thinking that far ahead. I'm just... Let's get it done. <sighs> just descending through these wood... Do I look like a lollipop lady or not? Just descending through these woods. It's hard on legs. I ain't gonna front. But I'm gonna do it. There's enough, unless I, unless something tragic happens or I like have a heart attack or sprain. No, even if I sprain something, I'll crawl to end. But unless something tragic happens, I'm gonna make it. Look at that, I can smell it from here, man. Dryad saddle. Beauty. We'll get him when he comes back in. Go! Yes! There you go, you got one. Medic! I didn't hold out much hope for medics on this one, but it's been a rich tapestry of um, unwell animals that have needed medics. And I'd just like to report at the end of the walk we had a 100% success rate. No one got left behind, so that's good news. As far as the eye can see is where I've come from. Oh man, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, Jeff. What's this? My dick. I'm losing it, mate. Is that? <laughs> Medic. 
it feels like the ground is moving, like someone's just moving the ground backwards. So I'm not good. Mo I actually, like I'm on a, on a, um, like I'm on a treadmill, a grass treadmill, and I don't seem to be getting any further. Definitely hurting, man. I, I've pushed it. I have pushed it these last two days. Well, all of it actually. But well, anyway. Don't grumble, mustn't grumble. Mustn't grumble about how tired legs are. Just just focus on the finish. We're gonna get there. The journey, the finish, the lot. Don't even know if I'm making sense anymore. Is this it? This is it. <laughs> Here it is, kids. Here it is. He's done it, look. So that's as far as it goes. My battery run out. I couldn't even do a, I couldn't even do a final thoughts, uh, and yeah, so ends my Cleveland Way journey, and it was very much that it was a journey. It had highs and lows, and it took me to places I didn't expect it to. One of the things I've taken from this hike is that life is very fleeting and fragile, and you never know when you or someone close to you is going to get logged off. So just enjoy your time here and try your best to make it a decent time for those around you. A little bit of love and compassion can make the world a difference to someone. And that's it, man. What a journey. Take care of yourselves and thanks for watching. How old go? My lady. I'm like Jordan trying to rise on to the top. Me, I'm trying to be an icon from the jump. They were war, then I let bygones be bygones. Cause they bars are gone by by the month. Me, I'm trying to be an icon from the jump. They were war, then I let bygones be bygones. Cause they bars are gone by by the month.